Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This is episode 3 of Project F-150. In the introduction video, I showed you guys that my F-150 has an error code that indicates the rear center wheel speed sensor input circuit failure. This error code causes the ABS light to light up. I looked up online and people say that the truck can still drive with this error code. However, since the onboard computer doesn't have the wheel speed info, it might affect shifting and damage the transmission in the long run. It will also prevent the ABS system from working properly. Since it is bad to both my truck and to my safety, I'd better fix it up before driving on the road, especially in winter time. Now, the fix suggested by my Blue Drive OBD scanner seems pretty straightforward. Simply replace the faulty ABS wheel speed sensor. According to the Haynes manual, to replace the wheel speed sensor, I just need to unplug the connector, undo the bolt, take out the old sensor, put in the new sensor, put the bolt back on, plug in the connector, and I'm done. Pretty easy, right? Sounds like a 5 minute job. I think I can do it after work and still get it done before dinner. So I ordered a replacement part from Rock Auto and chose a nice day to do the work. Here's the rear differential fluid field plug. And up there is the rear center ABS speed sensor. Target acquired. From a different angle, we can see that there's a bolt that holds the sensor in place. There's also an electrical tape that holds the wire in place. As you can see here, the sensor is well protected by those two vertical pieces of metal. However, this also gives us very little workroom to fit in any tools if the sensor gets stuck. So fingers crossed that the sensor comes out easily. Now, let's cut open the tape so we can remove the connector later. Alright, now let's take off the bolt that holds the sensor in place. Okay, going pretty smoothly so far. Let's see if we can just take out the sensor like this. Nope, won't come out. I knew it wouldn't be that easy. What if I use a tool? Because of limited space, I got this needle nose locking plier to see if I can get a good grip on the sensor and get it out. Uh, I still can't seem to get a good grip on the sensor. I don't want to damage the wire, so let me disconnect the connector and try again. So I removed the connector. Since the needle nose plier wouldn't get a firm grip because of the shape of the bite, let's try this different plier. Hmm, the head of this plier is too big to even fit in the gap. I wanted to try something else, but my family caught me for dinner. So I had to put everything back together and try again the next day. Moving on to the second day. Same procedure. Remove the bolt. Disconnect the connector. And take off the sensor. Take off the sensor. Take off the sensor. It still wouldn't budge even after I pried on it really hard. Fifteen minutes later. The connector even deformed a little bit but still wouldn't come out. What should I do? Maybe spray some penetrating fluid and see if it makes the sensor easier to come out? Let's give it a try. Spray some penetrating fluid around the sensor. I know the penetrating fluid won't sink in that fast, but I just want to give it a last attempt before heading out for dinner. Five minutes later. Nope, still wouldn't move. I let the penetrating fluid do its magic overnight and come again tomorrow. Moving on to day three. Let's try prying on it again. A little longer than a few minutes later. Oh come on, 
Give me some hope, will ya? How come this all seems so easy in YouTube videos when other people do it? At least come out a little bit, please. Welp, if the front doesn't work, let's try from the back and see if I can make some breakthrough from there. Two very boring minutes later. I couldn't see if I made any progress from the back, but I think it came out a little bit. I'm gonna go around and pry from the front again. Yes! It's coming out! Finally! What took you so long to come around, huh? Look how dirty it is! Gotta wipe down the hole to clear up the gunk and the penetrating fluid from before. Now, let's take a look at the old and the new sensors. They look exactly the same except the color of the connector part. It looks like the old rubber o-ring came out with the old sensor, so I don't need to go look for it in the rear differential. That's good. Before putting the new sensor in, I think it's a good practice to put some rear differential fluid on the o-ring to lubricate it a little bit. Okay, let's put in a new sensor. Hmm, as smooth as butter. I wish it was that easy to take out. Put the bolt back on. And then tighten it until it's pretty tight. I didn't torque it down because this piece doesn't move and I don't think it will come loose that easily. I wrapped the wire with some electrical tape like how it was before. Then plug the connector back in and make sure it's snug. I'm all done. Let's test it out. Hmm, the ABS light is still on after I started the truck. In fact, it was still on after I took it for a spin. That's not good. Something is still not right. Let's check if the connector was plugged in correctly and the wire is okay. The connector seems fine. Let's check the wire. Wait a second. That part of the tube seems broken. What the? The wire seems cut. Let's take a closer look from the other side. Hmm. This seems to be cut in half. Was this intentional? Let's get the wire out of the protective sleeve and see how bad the damage is. Okay, I guess it could also be that it got chewed up by rats or some other animals. It's pretty brittle here also. Whatever the cost was, I need to fix it. I need to figure out how to connect the two wires back together. The first thing is of course to find out which wire connects to which. I don't want the two polars to be reversed. After trimming down the broken part and wiping down the wire, I found that one wire has a red stripe and the other has a black stripe. This is great. The next thing I need to learn is how to connect the wires. While looking online for suggestions, I came across this innovative thing called the solder seal wire connectors. I got this kit from Amazon for less than $10. They used low temperature solder inside of the shrink tube to combine the benefit of shrink tube and soldering into one connector, which seems like a great option for this application. This kit includes 120 pieces of connectors for wires with different diameter. All that I need is a heat gun to use them to connect the wires. Sounds pretty simple. Let's try it out. But before that, I need to make sure that the wires are okay. I saw that the copper wires inside had turned black. I thought they were rusted due to exposure to the weather at first, so I kept trimming the wires hoping it would become better. That didn't work. It was quite upsetting because I thought I needed to replace the entire wire. I then looked up online how to treat copper rust and then found that the blackened copper was due to oxidation and not rust. The bad news is, why oxidation doesn't affect the conductivity on the inside, it will prevent two wires from making a good connection. The good news is, there is an easy way to treat the oxidized copper with a simple chemical reaction. First, I soaked the wires in some white vinegar and socked mixture for 15 minutes. This will get rid of the oxidized copper on the surface. Next, 
I put the wires into a baking soda and water mixture to neutralize the excessive acid from the vinegar. Lastly, I wipe down the wire with paper towel and let it sit and dry. We can see that it's not perfect, but we can see the original color of the copper wire again. Now we can connect the wires. Just put the connector on one side of the wire, twist the wires together, and put the connector sleeves over the wires. Make sure the solder aligns with the exposed wire. Do it for both wires. Once that's done, use a heat gun to blow on the connector. Do a few passes to make sure the entire connectors get heated so the tube can shrink evenly. Then, focus on heating the part with the solder until the solder melts into the wire. Flip the wire and check to see if the solder is melted all around. And that's it. Here comes the exciting part. Did it work? Turn on the engine. Hey, the ABS light is gone. This must mean it worked, right? Let's hook up the OBD scanner and check the code. Let's see. That error code is gone. Woohoo! There we go. After a roller coaster ride, I finally got rid of the ABS sensor error code. It was a fun experience, and I definitely learned a lot. Lesson number one. If you get stuck at a step, don't give up or get discouraged. It happens. Just keep working at it. Try all the methods that you can think of. Ask for advice from experienced folks. It will eventually work out fine. Lesson number two. Simply throwing new parts at an error code is not the solution. Diagnose the system first to identify the real issue. It's easier said than done, especially for beginners and weekend warriors like me who don't have a lot of experience and knowledge. But hey, we learn along the way. Baby step at a time. Cost-wise, the ABS wheel speed sensor was $27 and the connectors were $10. This brings the total cost to $299, even though the $27 could totally be avoided had I diagnosed the system first. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like my videos, please drop a like and subscribe. I really appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching. I see you next time.